Bom Natal. First of all, the, the notation, our notation is that if V is a vector space, then uh, CV is projectivization is the set of one dimensional subspaces. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, everything we talk about today is over complex numbers. All objects are over complex numbers. Okay, so let's uh, let me define what is a constructor. So a constructor on a complex manifold. And uh, this is just is just a closed analytic subset, which I denote by uh, script C inside the projectivization with the tangent bundle of M, holomorphic tangent bundle of M. So that's the definition. Cohen structure. So Rather simple object, just some sub, some sub variety inside the project by the tangent bundle. Now, if you have an open set, open subset of the complex manifold. Here, whenever I talk about open, I I mean Euclidean topology. On this, I say that it's Jarisky topology. But usually, open subset means Euclid Euclidean open set. Uh, then. Uh, the restriction of the cone structure means that just intersection with U. So this is a cone structure on U. So you can restrict the cone structure to, a, to an open subject. Uh, and then uh, a cone structure. Uh, is isotrivial. Yeah, this is isotrivial. If if the following holds, if there there is some uh, projective variety uh, where the vector space V has the same dimension as and, and the fiber uh, CX for general at general point, the fiber of the cone structure uh, is isomorphic isomorphic to G in TV as uh, projective variety. So isotrivia means that the fibers are generically, the general fibers are all isomorphic to each other. That's the notion of isotriviality. Okay. And sometimes we say this as G isotrivia. To emphasize that the fiber is isomorphic to this G. Or sometimes, uh, even G inclusion TV isotrivia. Okay. Uh, okay, and then uh, maybe at this point, uh, it's already uh, useful to give you some examples. Oh. So isotrivial cone structures are our um, main interest among cone structures. Today, you are mainly interested in isotrivial cone structures. Okay, so let me give some example. If G, if this G is a linear subspace,
then uh, then uh, z isotrivial cone structure in a manifold. What is this? It means that uh, some sub variety, so let's say general fiber is a linear subspace. So this is equivalent uh, to saying that a distribution. Uh, meaning uh, sub sheep of tangent sheep. I uh, should so say sub bundle of the tangent bundle on some on a JavaScript open set. So, isotrivial cone structure in this case is just equivalent to a distribution in the JavaScript open set. And uh, another example, if G in TV is a uh, smooth quadric hypersurface. So why do you need the ZSQ open set? Uh, because I assume my definition of a cone structure ignore some special singular fibers. This is just subset, uh, subset inside the TV. There may be some special ones. So when I when I define isotriviality, uh, I assume that ah, okay. I assume only a for general. Level. Okay, for general. Okay, thank you. Basically, in this discussion, we do not worry about special points. It's, uh, we look at uh, general fibers. So suppose this is a smooth quadric hypersurface. Uh, then. The isotrivial cone structure. What is this? This means that at general point you have uh, some distinguishes uh, quadric, a quadratic form on the tangent bundle uh, up to scalar. So this means that uh, it's a holomorphic conformal structure. On a JavaScript open. So the holomorphic conformal structure means that uh, it's a holomorphic Riemannian matrix up to scalar. In point wise, you have some Riemannian matrix up to scalar. So in this case, uh, Isotrivial cone structure is equivalent to conformal structure on some JavaScript subject. So why do you need the, uh, the condition for the dimension of V? Uh, dimension of V here? Yeah, so you said that dimension V is the same as dimension M. Yes. But it has nothing to do with the, uh, the following definition. I mean, the, uh, you need a Z. Yes, but you will see later, for example, when you define distribution, mm -hmm. uh, okay, you will see that. I mean, of course, uh, here, I mean, in this case, the variety determines uh, the embedding in a sense. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are situations that you have to consider it as a embedded subspace, embedded oh. subvariety. All right, all right. Okay. The requirement is that it's isomorphic as embedded sub variety. All right. Okay. Okay. And then uh, there's a generalization of this, the last example. So it's uh, more generally. If this is uh, the highest weight of it, so an irreducible representation, so, so this quadric is a special case. 
the quadratic hypersurface is a high straight orbit of the irreducible standard irreducible representation of the orthogonal group. So you can consider any uh, reductive group and its irreducible representation. And then there's a unique uh, closed orbit, which is high straight orbit. In this case, uh, then uh, G isotribial bone structure. This is, uh, uh, we will call this irreducible G structure. So, it is some G structure means that uh, something like actually it's more or less uh, just uh, definition. You can regard it if you are not familiar with this. You can regard this as that definition that it is some G structure means that uh, this variety is a high straight orbit of irreducible representation. You can it's not exact, but you can just for today. You can uh, believe that you can just regard this as a kind of definition of the right hand side. Okay. Okay. That's, uh, so that gives some examples. And then uh, I introduce some more concepts. So suppose you have a uh, Two uh, cone structures. So I have a cone structure on a manifold M and another cone structure in the manifold M field. And uh, I have a point X in M and another point X. In M field. Then uh, I say that G at X is equivalent to C field at X field. So this is the term I like to define. C at X is equivalent to C field at X field. If uh, there exists an uh, open neighborhood X and uh, and a biholomorphic map from U to U2, uh, which is send X to X field. Uh, such that its derivative, which is sent PTU to PTU two, this uh, sends uh, the cone structure on U to cone structure on U two. So if this holds, then uh, we say that the two cone structures are equivalent at the corresponding point. So perhaps at this point, it's better to give you some picture. So here I have a manifold M, M2, and then we have a, it's projected by the tangent bundle. And what is the cone structure? Cone structure is some, something inside here. So this is C. Okay. And the equivalent, the cone structure at X is equivalent to cone structure at X field if, if you can choose some neighborhood and biholomorphic map. So that uh, so the, the corresponding is derivative sends uh, this guy into this guy. So there's a correspondence 
between these two. Then we say that it's equivalent. So if you recall that it's in, in the case of a conformal structure, this is exactly like conformal equivalent uh, of two conformal structures. Now, uh, the equivalence of two cone structures are not easy to check from differential geometry. This is the sort of the basic problem of differential geometry, local differential geometry, how to show that two structures are locally equivalent. It's a difficult problem. So we introduced something slightly easier. So in the same situation, I say that C at X is uh, up to first order, or well, maybe to save time, let's say one z equivalent. It's the following code. So we define this notion that it is one z equivalent. If uh, we have uh, we have uh, the same uh, neighborhood and the biholomorphism such that D C C U uh, uh, is intersect. Well, maybe I. First write this. DC sends CX to C choose X and at, at that point and the DC C U uh, is tangent to uh, C choose U choose along along there. So in picture, in picture, what what do I mean by this? Means that well, here we have uh, this construct C, and by this map. It is sent to some cone structure here. On the other end, here is a, so this is a, the image of GPC. On the other end, there's a, originally there's a cone structure here. This is C tilde. So I, in this definition, one z equivalent. I do not assume that they are the same, but um, I'm assuming that the push forward of this guy intersect this guy along this fiber, and they are tangent along along this fiber. So they the two structures are equivalent up to first order at that point, but only at that point. We don't care about outside. So this is first order equivalent. And this kind of thing is uh, the reason you consider something like this is that it's easy to check. It's calculable, right? So you, so you can check it algebraically whether two structures are uh, one that equivalent or not. You can check it algebraically. So that's why we introduce it. Of course, you can introduce in the same way, like KZ equivalent, higher Z equivalent. But uh, essentially, one Z equivalent is the most important one. And which we need to discuss. And then some more notions. So a cone structure. Is uh, locally homogeneous. Uh, that's the terminology I define. Locally homogeneous. If the general X 
Okay, this is the neighborhood such that um, for all y in u, uh, c at y is equivalent to c at x. That's the notion of locally homogeneous. So meaning that uh, in a neighborhood, they look all the same. At each point, the neighborhood of X, all the points, the structure looks the same. So, it's, so there's a local uh, biholomorphic map which is sending any point to X, uh, the neighborhood of X, which preserves the structure. So that's the notion of local homogeneity. Okay, so for example, in the conformal case, this means that the conformal structure is locally homogeneous in the usual sense. Okay. And then uh, we have the following notion now. So there's an important example. Now you fix a some variety and we got V the vector space as a complex manifold. And then the tangent bundle of vector space is naturally trivialized. And then uh, its projectivization is trivial projective bundle. And uh, inside here, you have V cross G. So you have a corresponding object here, which I denote by that's the notation for this uh, trivial bundle with the fiber G. And so V has a natural G isotrivial cone structure, which is G flat, and this is called flat cone structure. The vector space has flat cone structure for each choice of uh, cell variety, naturally flat. And this is, of course, uh, locally homogeneous. Because there's a this is translation invariant. So every, at every point of the vector space, they are equivalent to each other. So it's uh, locally homogeneous. Then uh, a cone structure is locally flat if uh, that's the definition locally flat if uh, all general X. Uh, C at X. Well, maybe I. Okay, if let me like, define it this way. If it is Z isotrivial, that's a, it has to be isotrivial first, and for all general X. C at X is uh, equivalent C flat B at zero. Okay. So if it is uh, equivalent to this flat cone structure at a general point, it is, uh, we say that it is locally flat. Okay. And then uh, and then also uh, we say that uh, this is uh, so this cone structure is one flat if 
if uh, it is G isotrivial and plus uh, for all general X and uh, C at X, one Z equivalent. To the flat structure. So one that one flat means that uh, it is uh, um, not locally flat, but it, it is flat to first order at each point. That's the at each general point. That is the notion of one flat. Now let me give you some examples to illustrate. Now, when this is uh, say a distribution, then uh, of course uh, this cone structure is locally flat if and only if uh, it is integrable. This is a kind of trivial immediate C that uh, locally flat means that it is I mean, this flat uh, flat cone structure in the case where this is linear space, that's a foliation, it's a linear foliation. The so local plan is, is equivalent to the integrability, integrability of the distribution. But on the other hand, uh, if this is uh, One flat. Now it turns out that this is now a theorem. This is Frobenius theorem. That this is still equivalent to integrable. Because uh, by Frobenius theorem, if distribution is first order integrable, then it is integrable. At, if it's first order integrable at general point, then it's integrable. So, and the, the one flatness means that. It's first to the flat at every point, at, at general point. So now this is proven your theorem. So the second one is non trivial theorem of proven. First equivalence is trivial, essentially trivial. Okay. And then what happens when this is a conformal structure? Then, uh, is always one flat. So what conformal structure is one flat, even if it's very, very far from uh, locally flat. Any conformal structure is one flat. And this is uh, by the existence of Riemannian normal coordinates. That any Riemannian structure, you can choose a coordinate so that the Riemannian metric is uh, constant up to first order at each point. So this means that the conformal structure is always one flat. So sometimes one flat is already implies it's locally flat, but sometimes one flat is automatic. There's a, it gives no condition. And it depends really uh, on what is this G. It depends in some sense the projective geometry of this projective variety decides uh, the difference between one flat and uh, locally flat and, and so on. So, Now for, this is more technical now. So if you have one flat, uh, irreducible G structure, this is equivalent to saying that uh, existence of a torsion tree 
a time connection. It's like you know, like that, huh? uh, compatible with this is not definition. This is a this is a fact. fact. So I skip the proof, but this is a fact from differential geometry. So if you have one flat irreducible structure, then you have a torsion free affine connection compatible with the structure or with the construction. So for example, conformal structure. It's a affine connection, local affine connection, local connection. It exists locally. So for conformal structure, conformal structure is always one flat. You say that. So for conformal structure, we have a torsion free affine connection. And this is, we have a Levitz Vita connection. So that is the, the correct standard. Uh, one flat is any conformal structure, one flat. So any conformal structure has a natural Levitz Vita connection, uh, torsion free connection. But in general, for the, the other G structure, irreducible G structure, to have a such a torsion free connection, you need to require one flange. So, torsion is exactly this condition in some sense, one flange condition is exactly torsion. Okay. And then uh, this is the definition. So, one flat irreducible G structure. Is uh, locally symmetric if the curvature of this connection delta is parallel. This means that if co covariant derivative of the curvature is zero, it's a differential geometry notion. Uh, so if you are not familiar with this notion in differential geometry, just to see the next statement and just admit the next statement, then you can follow. So the fact is that local is metric reducible this structure uh, completely classified. Were completely classified. It's like it's a work of Katan. It's a classical result in differential geometry. The locally symmetric irreducible G structures are completely understood locally. So you don't have to worry about this. So whenever some G structure is locally symmetric, you can regard it as understood. Okay, so that's uh, uh, the differential geometry part. Okay. Any question now, up to now? Okay, so now we will go to algebraic geometry. And in algebraic geometry, I discuss this VMIT structure. So what to do? So now X is a smooth projective variety. And then you consider the rational curve zone X. This is the space of rational curve zone X. And then you consider an irreducible component. And then uh, you consider the following sub scheme Kx. This is uh, uh, members of K through X. Where X is a point in X. So for each point in X, you consider the sub scheme corresponding to regional curve passing through that point.
and uh, let's say that uh, we say that K is a family of minimal rational cost. Minimal rational cost. If for general F, AX is non empty and uh, projective, then it's minimal rational. So, for example, if X is a product embedded in a projective space, and if you have a family of lines covering X, then it is a minimal rational cost. So it's modeled on lines covering X. Okay. And then uh, in this case, so in, in, the, in the case of minimal rational cost, in this case, uh, let yes, yeah, this be the the closure of union of members and union of tangent to members of KS So it's just a collection of all tangent vectors of the curve passing through X. This is called uh, this is called uh, the VMRT address. Okay. You just collect all tangent structures of the members. That's uh, the sub variety. And VMRT mean, uh, is the abbreviation of variety of minimal rational tangent. And then we define C as the union of VMIT as general point, and then take its closure inside projected by tangent boundary. So this is a cone structure. In X and called VMIT structure. Of K on X. So whenever you choose a family of minimal rational curve, you have a natural cone structure just by collecting all the tangent directions. And that's, the, that's called the VMIT structure of K on X. In this way, you generate a lot of uh, interesting examples of cone structure coming from algebraic uh, geometry. So basically, any unit product manifold, you have an interesting cone structure. So there are lots of differential geometric objects uh, we can study. And uh, the goal is try to, uh, some big goal is try to uh, study isotrivial VMS uh, structure. Among VMS structures, some of them are not isotrivial. But we want to understand at least isotrivial VMIT structures, and especially at least one flat VMIT uh, structure. Because isotrivial VMIT structures are already very difficult to understand. But maybe one flat is slightly, well, maybe much easier. So we are interested in whether we can understand these objects. And uh, why is this interesting problem? Well, I will give you a number of examples, which shows the subtle difference between this notion in the case, case of VMLT structure.
So now you fix a smooth projective variety. And then uh, you consider uh, consider this as a hyperplane. In, you add one more dimension, so this is a hyperplane. And then let X be the blow up of uh, this projective space along this sub this sub manifold G. Uh, and then K is the uh, uh, proper transform. Of lines on intersection mm -hmm. then this becomes a family of minimal rational curve on X and the VMRT structure. Is uh, G locally flat? So you can, for any smooth projective variety, you can uh, define a VMX structure, which is G isotrivial and is uh, in fact locally flat. So there are lots of examples. It's sort of uh, analogous to flat, uh, flat cone structure. So this is a flat example. Among uh, real matrix structures. And then uh, let's consider this. X is homogeneous space, rational homogeneous space of some uh, semi simple Z modulo parabolic group P. And uh, when isotropy representation of the isotropy group on the tangent space is irreducible uh, we say that x is irreducible Hermitian symmetric space And in this case, uh, there exists a uh, minimal rational curve and uh, with VMIT structure uh, is locally flat. So the most well-known example is uh, hypercode or Grassmannian. Then it belongs to this. And the when isotropy representation on C zero X has one irreducible subspace B zero of co dimension one. So there is a a hyperplane where it acts irreducibly, uh, we say that X is uh, adjoint variety. In, in this case, uh, there is this minimal rational curve uh, where C P T X is uh, Z isotrivial, where G is the highest weight orbit inside this hyperplane. And this is called a uh, sub adjoint variety. And this example is. Uh, uh, of course, locally, this is homogeneous because it's homogeneous space, uh, but this is not uh, not one flat. This is not one flat. In, in the 
uh, irreducible Hermitian symmetry case, it is uh, locally flat. But in the case of adjoint variety, it is not even one flat because this distribution is not integrable. This uh, hyperplane defines non integrable distribution. So in this case, it's not one flat. So sometimes it's locally homogeneous, but not one flat. In this case, it's uh, locally flat. And then there's a more interesting example. Those examples are all very classical. There's a more interesting example. Is this is due to Michel Brion and Barafu. This is more recent. And this is a case where X is wonderful compactification. Over a, a semi simple group G. Then uh, there is a minimal rational, minimal rational curve, and such that uh, the DMRT structure is uh, locally symmetric. But not locally flat. So this case, uh, it is locally symmetric, but not local. So this is, in particular, this is one flat. So sometimes VMIT is one flat, locally symmetric, but it's not locally flat. Another example, this is uh, myself and Abawa Fu and myself. So L is, uh, say, this is uh, Lagrangian Grassmannian. The so meaning that is the uh, set of all Lagrangian subspace in a fixed symplectic vector space. And Then X is uh, uh, general hyperplane section. Of L. And if I think if N is at least two, probably five, then you have a minimal rational curve where the VMIT structure is, in fact, it is a sub G structure. So it is a high, it's a isotrivial uh, with, uh, with the sub high straight vector on some it is sub representation, uh, but not, uh, not one, uh, not one flat. And not locally homogeneous. So this is a sort of the first example where it is uh, non, it is uh, um, isotrivial but not uh, locally homogeneous. So there are many examples that satisfying some of the conditions but doesn't satisfy the others. So there are many examples of VMIT all isotrivial VMIT structures. Uh, which exhibit the difference between locally flat, locally symmetric, one flat, and so on. They are uh, all kinds of situations can arise. And it's kind of uh, puzzling how to make uh, order out of this. So there seems to be many different examples. So here's our main result. Now it's time for result. So this is our first building, and this is a joint work with the uh, Chitang Lee here. So 
it shows that a real matrix structure uh, that is one flat and irreducible tree structure is a local symmetric. This is the and this you give some order out of this. If it's one flat and irreducible this structure, then it must be locally symmetric. So the structure is understood completely. And how the proof of this use the following result. Following this is a big theorem of uh, Maruklov in Subakov. This is called the classification of it is sub affine volume. And it says the following uh, G I should uh, and G is I should see their constructor. That is one flat. Is locally symmetric. So whenever you have one flat uh, irreducible, uh, wait, I see the function is locally one flat. Yes, I, when I say, uh, sorry, sorry, I have to say, I have to say that uh, not I, not just I see that the irreducible destruction. Well, I have to get the digital G structure is one flat. So if uh, this is the highest weight of it over it is of representation, and if it is uh, one flat, then it is, all, it is always locally symmetric. Unless there are two cases, unless when uh, G is is VMIT or it is a Hamiltonian symmetric case. Uh, here, in this case, or two, G is if G zero and P zero, it is a subagent variety. This case. So these are two projective varieties, these two type of projective varieties are the only examples where you can have isotrivial G structure, one flat, but not locally, locally symmetric. So these two are the only exceptions. In any other cases, if you have one flat irreducible G structure, it is already locally symmetric. Just from the type of this sub variety, you can say. Now these two are exceptions. And locally in, in the differential geometric uh, world, there are lots of examples of this type, which are one flat but not locally symmetric. But for example, if you consider quadric hypersurface, smooth quadric hypersurface, it's a conformal structure. Conformal structure is always one flat, but it is not necessarily locally symmetric, of course. And this quadric hypersurface belongs to type one. So there are these two types of variety where discrepancy can occur. In all other cases, was already done. So to prove this theorem is enough to prove this for these two types. Uh, 
And this was uh, half of it is already proved, and this was book's result. By the way, this is uh, 1999, and this result of more is 208. So this is, it says that our uh, real matrix structure. Uh, it is uh, G isotrivi for one. So this kind of real matrix of it is sub Hamilton symmetric uh, space is is locally free, uh, flat. So any real matrix structure, this is isotrivial of this type, the first type is already locally flat. This is Mox result. So what remains to be studied is the second case, subordinate variety, what happens in this case? And that's what it proves. So this is our theorem two. And this is, again, this is this kind of So in a sense, the, the essence of theorem one is this theorem two, using this classification, Markulov and Subakaiko. So here it says that our VMI structure this is X uh, where G uh, isotrivial for the second type of subadjoint variety uh, is also locally flat. We prove this. So this to uh, prove the theorem one. So let me quickly tell you how these are proved. So there's a, a fundamental difference between these two situations. And I'll explain what is the fundamental difference. So in most case, one can show that there's a connection Data on a neighborhood U over general minimal rational cost. So you have uh, this uh, projective manifold and minimal rational curve C, and then you can choose some neighborhood such that over here you can define a connection delta. And then you can use a uh, positivity property of the tangent bundle restrict to this minimal rational curve to prove the curvature R of this connection is zero. That's how he proved that it is lo locally flat because the coverage vanishes, so it becomes locally flat. Now, uh, this approach is, uh, in the case of uh, two, this doesn't work. So there's an, uh, no neighborhood of minimal rational curve. allowed connection. There's always some singularity of the connection along some hypersurface. So you cannot have such neighborhood. So that's the difference between these two cases. So our idea is You cannot have this kind of connection here, but you you can you, you look at the universal family of this minimal rational curve. So this is universal family. Then inside here you have kx. Whenever you choose a point. There's a sub scheme corresponding to rational curves passing through the X. Now, uh, 
Here you have some G structure. Here you have G structure on some direct slope effect. And you can you do not have no connection on the rational curve C uh, in a neighborhood of C. What you do is you transfer this G structure to the space of rational curve. And here you obtain what's called a filtered G structure. So you use a sort of deformation theory of such curves to construct certain geometric structure here, which is called filtered G structure. And in this case, uh, there exists a connection delta on a neighborhood of this KS. So instead of rational curve, we use this rational homogeneous space. So over here, you have some neighborhood with the connection delta. And then uh, prove the, the, the curvature vanishes on this on, on, on a neighborhood of. So instead of working on the neighborhood of rational curve on right hand side, you go to the space of rational curves and study the neighborhood of this subsequent KX and you construct a connection there. In this case, it works. So this is so-called the uh, Penrose transform in uh, twister theory. So you transfer the information, a local information here to some somewhat global information in the corresponding moduli space of rational curve. So that's our idea. Sorry about that. I am stuck here. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So any comment or questions? You can also ask questions. Yeah, I, I, I have one question. Good, good question. Uh, this is, uh, the result is, of course, you only need a locally symmetric to prove it, but what more proved is it's actually locally flat. And also in our case, it's actually locally flat because we proved that some curvature vanishes identically, not the parallelity of connection, uh, curvature, but vanishing of curvature. So it's a stronger result. Sorry, so we couldn't hear the questions. Can you repeat? Uh, the question was whether it's locally flat or just locally symmetric, okay. because to prove our theorem is enough to have locally symmetric. But the result more proved, and also theorem two, is we prove a stronger result that it, in this case, it is locally flat in both cases. Because what we proved was that curvature vanishes, not just to curvature parallel. So we prove a stronger result. Also here, the curvature vanishes identically. That's what's true. Okay. Okay, so, and someone asked a question. So who was it? Yeah, I, I'm asking, so how, how do you reduce uh, from theorem one to theorem two? Theorem one to theorem two? How do I? Yeah, because theorem two is, uh, is uh, yeah, theorem two, you, you use this uh, Merkov uh, uh, result, uh, yes, which yes. is only for G mob C. No, no, Merkov, uh, Schubachhofer is for any G irreducible G structure. It is for any for, one flat irreducible G structure. Okay. Uh, uh, you, shall we okay. recall the theorem, the Merkulov Schubachhofer is not for G mod C. It is for any irreducible representation of group G. If you have mm -hmm. if you have irreducible G structure which is one flat, then uh, they say that it is always locally symmetric, unless the representation is one of these two types. The, okay, okay, okay. So, so, so another question is, uh, yeah, I didn't understand uh, what, what's the difference between locally symmetric and the locally homogeneous. Ah, uh, locally homogeneous is. Uh, locally symmetric, okay. Locally symmetric 
is always locally homogeneous, but not the other way around. Because, for example, if you if you see like G mode P of adjoint variety, then it is locally homogeneous. It is not locally symmetric because it's not even not one flat. Locally symmetric is in particular implies it's one flat. So if there's any distribution, the distribution must be integrable. If it's a locally symmetric and if if the distribution distribution must be integrable because it's one flat. But locally homogeneous need not be one flat, like uh, adjoint variety. There can be non-integrable distribution, but still homogeneous. So there's a difference. This is uh, much stronger, uh, much more general. Local homogeneity is more general. Locally symmetric, as I say, is completely understood. Local homogeneous is less understood. It's a much more complicated situation. Although it's okay. reasonably well understood. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other questions, comments? I mean, uh, I have a question. I mean, this uh, locally homogeneous, I think these were uh, classified uh, by, by Wimberg in the late 60s. So in, in terms of T algebras or something, yeah, I remember that. Yes, yes. Okay, Fabrizio, thank you. So locally homogeneous mean can be classified in terms of two Lie algebras and sub algebras, of course. But what I'm saying is among VMIT structures, among those coming from variety of minimal rational tangent, what kind of local homogeneous structures are possible? This is not understood yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, a, it's a algebraic, I mean, it's a differential geometrically locally homogeneous is sort of understood in terms of Lie algebra, okay. But from algebraic geometric point of view, those VMIT structures, which is locally symmetric, uh, we do not understand completely. Which of them can actually appear as uh, VMIT structures? We, are, we do not, we haven't understood it yet. Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. And more questions, comments. All right. If not, then rest next speaker again. Thank you very much. It was a nice talk. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So thank you everybody for coming and uh, you have a good one. So good night and uh, good morning. Okay. Good night. Yeah.